Whoa! What's up, everybody? I'm sitting in my room. I'm just playing around here. Now, I mostly uh, am aware that you guys watch this channel because I'm a great programmer and you learn a lot from programming. Not really. My name is Russ, rwgresearch.com, and this is not typically what I do. But I'm going to show you what I've been doing with this battery BMS system trying to get things to, to be displayed on my phone interface with a wire, so through USB. And some of this is going to make great sense. Some of this it'll be like whoop for most of you. But that's okay. Just watch what I've been doing. So I'm going to try to do this quickly, but I'm sure it'll take me longer. And that was definitely a bird. Oh, look. Apparently Sky has been in our room for a while. Sky, dude, come on. What are you doing? What are you doing in here, dude? Let's go put you back, and then we'll finish our video. That was not planned. Quite hilarious. Anyway, so let me show you what I've been doing on this project. There's a lot involved. I'm going to go really fast. Just bear with me. Okay, so here's what I got. I've got the BMS system, which I haven't really got into depth yet, but don't worry about that. We'll do that later. But it has a serial out, and basically it also has another port that you can plug into this little unit right here. Now what I want to do is display this unit information, okay, so it gives you state of charge and voltages and temperatures and each battery cell voltage and all kinds of cool stuff. And I want to display this on my own app, on my phone, with other things that I can also control because this is really bulky and I don't want to put both of them on there. And my main goal is GPS speed, so I can't do that on this unit because I don't know how to program this particular unit because it's not mine. So there's another port on this board that has just got serial out. In the last video I showed you, I took this board which is just a RS-232 and converted it down to logic level UART and I'm running it into this beagle bone. Um, this is temporary. I'm going to use the pocket beagle at the end of this but right now I'm using this to get everything working and uh, debugged and everything else. And then I've got my old iPhone 5 connected to the USB port. Now, I, w I could do this wirelessly if I really wanted to, but I actually like using this. So there's a protocol called PeerTalk from uh, 2012 that people, I don't know who actually made it, you can look it up in the description, but they have PeerTalk, and PeerTalk is a just protocol that Apple actually, well, there's a open port that Apple uses for iTunes and stuff, and you can access that back door through this program called PeerTalk. Peer Talk. Okay, so... Peer Talk, that's what it's called. So you can download Peer Talk and you can install it on Xcode and you can put it on your phone and you can make it do things like, in this case, talk to BeagleBone. So I had to install all this software that goes with this and I um, figured all this out um, about six to eight months ago working on a project for work. And it's all open source so you guys can do this as well. So after configuring this guy to read the UART and um, getting all that working, then I built a Python script, which I'll show you right here. And the Python script, all it does, this is poor quality footage, I apologize, it just sort of is what it is. But um, if I run my little Python script, okay, mm -mm, let's see here. Let's try this one. Okay, so here's my here's my script. All this does, this huge long program right here, all this does is spit out the information coming from the um, the controller and spits it out on my screen. So let's actually run that. Okay, so there is the data. It's going to be kind of hard to see because it's moving by real fast, but we are basically getting the data that we need into a Python script and displayed onto our terminal screen. So I'm SSH'd into the BeagleBone wirelessly, and that's how I'm making this work. So that data is the same data that's on this screen and the battery screen. So I'm actually going to um, stop that, and I'm going to kill that job so we don't mess anything up. 
And so you can see here, you've got all the battery voltages, you've got everything you need. I, I've gotten that all working, just proof of, of concept that all the data is there and working. So that's cool. So the next thing we need to do is get Peer Talk actually doing what it's supposed to be doing. So if I open up Peer Talk, I made this text super duper tiny so I could fit it all on the screen. So it says listening to blah 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 port number. So what I'm going to do is actually run that particular. Well, I'll show you what the peer talk looks like. So this is what the peer talk looks like. And I'm only sending over certain data. I'm not sending all of it. Here I didn't send this battery voltage data. I only sent, it, did, sent the other data just to make sure that I could get this to work. Um, so we'll go ahead and run this one. So this one is... Now running, okay, and you can see we are displaying the data on the iPhone. Okay, there it is. So that is the that is the actual data that's coming through minus the battery data. All right, let's see if we can see it here scrolling by. So uh, the thing is though is this is lagging really really bad. So I'm going to actually stop this job, and this will you can see it's still running. And it'll take a minute for it to quit running. Um, so what I decided to do is instead of sending the data over as actual data, that I would just decode the data as a hex string. And that was going to be way easier. So there, it finally stopped and it says disconnected. But you can see if I hold the phone steady enough, we got the hex, pa hex packet data, then the voltage that I had to add up in the program, and then all the other stuff that goes with it. So that's cool. That works. Um, but you can see there's a hex packet here, and then I decoded the packet, then the next hex packet, and I decoded the packet. The battery voltage stuff only comes over once every like three or four times, uh, versus the other stuff that comes over more consistently. One, two, three, four, and then a battery voltage, one, two, three, and then a battery voltage. It's kind of random, apparently. So that's all fine and dandy, but what I really want to do is just send over the hex packet data. So I created a program that does just that. I will run it and you can see um, if we can see both of them at the same time without getting in the way. So it is literally just sending the hex pa packet and then I'm going to decode the hex packet in Xcode which is what I'm using to do my programming. Thanks, by the way, for people who sent me links to things and products and all sorts of stuff. I haven't had time to get back with you, but I appreciate that. So you can see the hex string data is actually coming over onto the iPhone. So And it's pretty well um, correct in its timing. So if I, if I stop the program, then it pretty well instantly stops. So it's, it's sending over data like at speed so that's cool so we kinda got that figured out without having to worry about any delays or problems and so um, after getting all of that working I actually created um, this little program right now which all it does is it takes this is in uh, everything I just showed you was in Python scripts or Python language and now what I'm showing you is in Swift so in Swift I basically created a hex string data and just made it a variable and then read the data down here and displayed the data down here. So I, I decoded um, basically the data. So I have the temperatures and I have the battery percentage um, displaying properly in my code. It spits out the data as it needs to spit it out. Yada, yada, yada. That's cool. And then so this is the um, state of the system like the battery state and a few other things but if I wanted to see the battery voltages then I just change my temporary variable data over to the hex string of data that is the battery voltages and now if I run this again boop now it's actually it's hard to see but it's actually spitting out all of the the voltage data which is each one of the voltage cells and what it's actually reading. So that was that was actually the exact same thing that we just saw here. Okay, these are a little bit different voltages, but I made these look pretty, so they displayed correctly. These are just raw numbers. 
but you get the idea. So I was able to get basically the string that will be sending over to the iPhone to read properly and decode properly. Now I'm not finished decoding and I still got things to fix, but just as sort of proof of concept, it works. So then what I did is created the actual um, program that will actually be doing the display. So here is the main storyboard. It looks like this as a raw instance and then right now I'm running a simulator of what it actually is going to look like and this is what it's going to look like. So these colors don't show up very well but these are just raw numbers just to show what it would look like um, but the dials actually change colors depending on where they're at so I can set the color depending on the number so for instance when the state of charge gets to 40 I can change it yellow and when it gets to 10 I can change it to red and I can keep it green the rest of the time I can do the same thing with the battery voltage I put a kilowatt measurement on here because I am I got the current coming in from the BMS controller and I have the voltage per cell coming into the controller and then I can add up the voltage multiply it by the current and I can display a kilowatts so that's pretty cool because so I'm doing that in the app not from the BMS and then I got my GPS that will be reading the actual speed these are like temperatures and other things I want to do and I'll probably put a button on here for high speed low speed um, different controls that will be sending data through the iPhone back over to the BeagleBone and doing what I want. So if we get out of here and open up the app, there it is. The colors don't show up very well in on this camera, but the colors are there. That's more what it looks like. Greens and blues and nighttime mode looking things. I don't know how that's going to look in the, uh, the broad daylight, but anyway, uh, so I'm really close, but I didn't get done, and so I just thought I'd kind of show you what it took to actually get to this point. So, you know, to recap, we are over here in the BeagleBone. We created this simple um, Python script by editing, or editing the um, actual Peer Talk original script, and we basically grabbed the hex data coming from the... Um, well, it wasn't hex. I converted it over to hex. It's actually, um, it's actually just serial data coming over, and I had to convert it to hex. And then I can take that raw hex data, send it over to my iPhone app, and actually print out the values um, accordingly, wherever our stuff went here. So I can print out the values as raw values, and then I can actually update. I'm really close, and I didn't get time to finish this today to actually make make this really show up on the simulator. Whew! Anyway, it's, I, I'm surprised I got this far. You guys know, uh, I think you guys know, I really need to put this back further, see if that works, but you guys know I do not typically program. So this is like really difficult stuff for me. However, I've been somewhat familiarizing myself with this stuff because of the project I'm working on at work is very relatable to what I'm doing here. It's 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 a similar controller with a similar interface, but a totally different project, obviously. So I'm using those skills that I learned, taught myself after hours, not at work. I actually taught myself most of these things outside of work hours. And um, so I'm applying those thought processes and things to this pretty sweet deal. So at the end of the day, we are going to attach this to the front of the Zero motorcycle. And um, it is again displaying the same data as on here, but it's displaying it in a unit that's much smaller, much more compact, and I can actually set different um, modes of acceleration or top speed, or do I want it to stay under a current level? And then the Beagle Bone itself will be controlling the motor controller and doing a feedback motor control situation to keep it in check, which is pretty cool. I can leave it wide open, basically a direct pass through but it'll keep a nice ramp consistent all the time because right now the throttle's a bit weird. Anyway, that was a lot. I hope you enjoyed. God bless you guys. This has been short of a uh, miracle to get this crap working. I, I have been stretching the limits of my capabilities to the point where I'm like super exhausted. I've been working on this every night for like four or five hours a night for two straight weeks and I'm pretty dang close so I'm pretty happy about that. But I still got a lot of work to do to get the stuff back to the beagle bone and out to a controller and blah, build that but it's not too difficult it just takes a lot of wanting to do it so quickly i would like to add this to the end of this video you know 
I started a new job about eight or nine months ago, something like that, and I just told myself that I was going to remember people's name, okay? And so that's what I did. I just told myself, I, I, I'm really bad with names, but I told myself to believe in myself that I was going to remember people's names. So every person I met, I just burned it in my memory. I'm going to remember this person's name. And <clears throat> strangely enough, I remember everyone's name. I had a trouble with a few names, but I remember all of them, which is like very unusual for me to re remember people's names. I know you guys can relate. I'm sure people out there can relate that it's really hard to remember people's names. And so you're a person that says, yeah, I'm bad with names. But what I realized is it's actually a personal choice um, for most of us anyway, is to physically tell yourself you can do it and you do it. And that's actually what happened with this right here. I, you can ask my wife. I sat down and I said, I'm going to learn how to program iOS apps. And I'm going to learn how to deal with Linux. Uh, I'm not good at that part of it. I'm better with this just because I can. But what really made that happen was two things. One, the easy, the easy part, Xcode from Apple actually is really easy to use and start to understand. You just got to take some tutorials online, which is what I did, and learn how to do this stuff and then put time and effort into it. But the second thing, well, the most important thing, is making the mental choice that you can do it. And this applies to anything. You guys know that I've never programmed on this channel, and if I have, I failed miserably. This is way outside the scope of my normal to-dos. And I did teach myself this on my own. Um, there was a few influence personnel here and there, people that I uh, you know, was in touch with that did help me on a few pieces here and there. Richard, my friend Richard and my friend Matt, both really got me um, more familiar and comfortable with working with Linux, which was great. But then I just had to make the choice that I was going to learn it and do it. Now the iPad, or the iOS, I'm using iPads for other stuff, but the iOS programming for like this iPhone, I just told myself I was going to do it. I spent the effort time for the last six to eight months learning how to do this on my own, and now I'm to the point where I can make really cool stuff without a whole lot of effort. Less than a month, month's worth of work, I'm going to be able to have this thing fully functional and do what I want, which is actually really cool. It'll actually take me a little longer to develop the board and the output side, but just the input data and get this mounted on my bike and working is actually something that I would have never been able to do six months ago. So the moral of the story is get out there and try stuff and tell yourself you're going to be able to accomplish the goal and then do it. Now, you are going to fail and you just need to pick yourself up and try again because I have failed miserably a hundred times trying to develop things similar to this for other stuff in the last six months, but I have succeeded. So I just want to give that to you guys. I think it's important. This is sort of a biblical principle is just like, you know, have faith in what you're capable of doing and do it. And uh, for me personally, God's got my back and he can help me through anything. And I ask him every day to help me get stuff like this working because that's just kind of the person I am because I've seen it work in my life. So read the Bible more as always. Peace and out. Peace and peace and out. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful day. I'm going to give you a quick view of my um, backyard. Check it out. Look at the beautiful mountains out there. I got the solar panel on the roof with some shoes. Kids are out there playing. The view kind of sucks because of the trees, but there's a really, really beautiful mountain line back there. It's kind of rainy today. Anyway, peace and love. God bless. And today's Riley's birthday, so wish her, ha wish her happy birthday in the comments. Thumbs up, thumbs down, let me know what you thought. I won't bore you with more programming in the future. I'm sure I'll show you some more as I go, but I can't teach you what I'm doing. I can only just show you what I've accomplished. So if you want to learn, go watch some other tutorials on how to learn. But yes, one day at a time, boys and girls. Believe in yourself. Put in the time. Put in the effort. Have some people around you encouraging you that you can ask questions to. And just do stuff. and Make it happen. Love you guys. Peace.